An exciting new event hitting St. Louis for the first time, allowing designers and nonprofits to meet and match services for design needs. And we're going to be talking to the Vice President of PGAV Destination, a company that has a whole lot of projects here in the city. And if you're in the market to sell your home, you'll want to see our interview with Kelly Hager, who has some tips for selling your home fast. All that and more coming your way next on St. Louis Presents. Welcome to St. Louis Presents, and you guys, on the way over, I had to turn on the seat warmer in my car, so that is a first for several wow. months now. That's, that's really early. <laughs> I know. It's... I had to put a jacket on today. <laughs> I did have to put it, and obviously I'm wearing some sleeves today, so I felt yeah, like it was time. I have not used my air conditioner at home to sleep for a couple of days, too. Which is very yeah. nice, but um, yeah, the baseball season's winding down, hockey season's ramping up, mm -hmm. football has begun. Halloween's almost here. And some stores have the Christmas stuff up, so it is <laughs> officially ready for fall. That. I've seen that, and it just, I couldn't do it. I was like, it is still August. Why? It is <laughs> I, I too think, early. I think there should be a law. It should actually be legislated that you shouldn't be able to advertise for Christmas before Thanksgiving. I'm serious. Or at least October. Why there ought to be a law? <laughs> I started seeing it in August, and I was like, oh my gosh. But October is more appropriate. It's right yeah. Halloween, you know, when you're getting ready for Thanksgiving and all that. So. Yeah, poor Thanksgiving just gets railroaded every year, mm -hmm. doesn't it? Mm -hmm. um, well, we have some really interesting guests on the show today. And one of the things that I love is discovering companies that do things that you'd never heard of. And one of the companies we're going to talk to today designs things all over the world. I mean, they've been in St. Louis for decades, mm -hmm. and I think a lot of people are not familiar. Like yep. what kind of things? Well, for example, they had a big hand in designing the Cardinals uh, Museum and Hall of Fame mm -hmm. in Ballpark Village, which if you haven't gone yet, is well worth the price of admission. Yeah, I've been to Ballpark Village, but I have not been to the museum. Same and for it me. It looks amazing yeah. from what I see, but I have not been there. So you've been there, haven't you? I have, and I think if you you even have a tiny, tiny interest in baseball, you will find it fascinating. If you're a big Cardinals fan, you'll be in well, heaven. What do they have? Like bats and jerseys? Or? They do, but it's very interactive. Like <laughs> you can actually... Guess, I didn't know. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> I'm surprised I came up with and that. Balls? Yeah. yeah. I think, I'm not, I'm forgetting whose bat it is. I think it might be Ozzie Smith's. I mean, you stand there and you can hold the bat no and kidding. take a picture oh, and they cool. have, you know, you stand almost in, you know how the World Series trophy is round and has all the flags? Mm -hmm. It's like you're standing and a replica of that. I mean, it's oh, just, cool. it's very cool. You can go into a broadcast booth and pretend you're a broadcaster. I, I've been done that. So, it, <laughs> yeah. I am a broadcaster. For Steve and I being radio people, that's not as much of a thrill. It's like, no, you go ahead and do that. But I mean, people, we do that every day. people love that. So it, it's, it should be really fascinating. Um, and of course, we'll talk about selling your home because it was, so homes were selling like hotcakes this summer. Is and that going to be the case this fall? That. I've been in my house like 22 years and mm -hmm. uh, I don't know, I keep thinking maybe I should sell. Well, I mean, maybe you should. Are you wanting to move? I don't know. <laughs> I'll have to talk to Kelly Hager about it. I've got a lot of questions. There you go. There you go. All right. Well, that ends way, so much more. <laughs> <laughs> Coming up on this edition of St. Louis Presents, we mentioned football. And, of course, the Rams season is underway. Let's get a, a little look at uh, the Rams season for this year here in St. Louis. Rick is a St. Louis Rams season ticket holder. Rick, start from the top. What does the St. Louis Rams mean to downtown St. Louis and the region as a whole? Well, I think it's the region as a whole is good for economic development. As you can see, we, you know, be, being where we're located, even, even if people in St. Louis don't buy the tickets, we always have out-of-town fans. We're within easy driving distance of a lot of other cities. And I, you know, I, um, we have the Cardinals here. But there's a, a bit, you know, uh, I really think football has become America's game over baseball. Hi, this is Jim, and he's a Rams fan. 
what impact would it have to St. Louis, in your opinion, if this was the last opening day ever for the Rams in St. Louis? Uh, it'd be terrible because we're a baseball town, but we got to be a football town too. We got to have three major sports, and I think it'd be devastating. And I think they're staying. Are you from St. Louis? Uh, no, I am. Yes. Are you from Minnesota? Yes, I am from Minnesota. So you didn't. You live in St. Louis, so you didn't like make a journey here. Correct. But you kept your. Uh, you know your roots gotta, for the Vikings. With the roots. You got your uh, Adrian Peterson jersey on today. Yeah. What if this was the last home opener ever for the St. Louis Rams? I think that there'd be a lot of upset Rams fans. They gonna stay here because we a good fan base, and we out here we ready to win. You heard? Me? Our first guest is designated as the St. Louis top one percent of real estate agents. And she's going to. Uh, tell us today and give us some advice about selling your home fast as uh, well as some other things too. Kelly Hager, how are you? Good, how are you? And Kelly, I have to ask right off, is selling your home fast a good idea? I mean, from my perspective as a seller, is that, do I really want to sell my home fast? Well, then it prevents a lot of people coming through your house over a long period of time. Mm -hmm. And typically the best offer that you get is always the first offer. So it's- Really? It, yes, I've usually heard that. Mm -hmm. I've actually heard that. Mm -hmm. You know, I love those shows um, on cable TV. There are a bunch of them now, like uh, Love It or List It. I'm sure mm -hmm. you watch that, right? Yes. And I just read an interview with the Property Brothers who have a show mm -hmm. on TV, but I read an interview just the other day, and they were talking about um, like rookie mistakes that mm -hmm. people make. Mm -hmm. Uh, like one of the things is trying to be your own contractor or fixing the house up yourself. What do you mm -hmm. think about that? Yeah, what I would That's say is unless you have a lot of experience, go to people that have that experience because they're going to be able to tell you. Also, if you connect with your realtor first, they can give you some guidance on this is going to make an impact and you're going to get a return on investment versus uh, that's not as important as something like putting a backsplash in a kitchen or adding knobs that might be a less expensive fix that might dress it up a little bit yep. instead of replacing all the cabinets. Hey, have you ever sold a house, Sandy? No, I have not. However, mm -hmm. um, one thing that I've actually recently talked to a, a girlfriend of mine who's mm -hmm. getting ready to sell their house is that one of the things that is a big issue, I guess, with people that are getting ready to sell mm -hmm. their homes is that they let a lot of deferred maintenance kind of go by yes. and then they wait until the last minute when they have to find out all that they have to do to their house to get it prepared and they end up spending $50,000 just to get it done or $25,000 just to get that done. So what would your advice be for people who are getting ready to sell? Would it be in the next year or something? Or So start now. Connect with, the, connect with your realtor a year in advance and say, what are really the most important projects that I need to get accomplished over this winter? So it might be that the carpeting needs to be replaced mm -hmm. or the lighting needs to be replaced. I will tell you the biggest problem that most people that is not expensive is clean your house. Really clean it. I've, I been, mean, th I've been thinking about that. Clean <laughs> and declutter. Decluttering yeah. mm -hmm. is really important as well. What about staging? You know, when I see these shows I was just mentioning, mm -hmm. they always talk about the importance of staging. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Yes. So staging is really important. You want people to see that there's a living room possibility in this in this stage. You also want there to be, um, you know, in the bedroom, you don't want to put stuff on angles because it makes the rooms look smaller. smaller sure. And people who aren't angly people, aren't, they're not going to be able to connect with your house as easily as if it's in a more traditional um, stage. And I guess mode. you don't want to show too much your own style because it might not be, my style might not be yours. You bet. So in terms of decluttering, you want to take down some of your family pictures. Having one or two up is great, but having walls of never pictures up, they can't imagine themselves in the house if all they're seeing is your family in the house. Another thing I read in that article from the Property Brothers, they talked about, you know, how emotional you feel about your mm -hmm. house. And so people don't have a realistic expectations about what their house is worth because, mm -hmm. of course, you know, to, to me, my house is, you know, worth a million dollars, but you sure. probably give me, you know, 50 for it. <laughs> dollars. <laughs> That's right. Great. <laughs> so what the, the biggest mistakes that people make are overpricing their property. Mm -hmm. You know, a, a really good agent is going to go and do a top-notch statistical analysis and then come tour your house and really help you understand what is really realistic versus what is pie in the sky almost every seller that we work with always wants to price their house $20,000 more than what it's worth. It's my true. my parents as well, when <laughs> they put their house in the market, I was like, no, we are not doing that. So it's a matter of really being realistic because at the end of the day, we share the same goal and that's selling your house. Well, Kelly, where, where do we really stand now on the housing market? You know, for years we've, we've realized how bad it is mm -hmm. and we've heard it's getting better, but yes. where do mm -hmm. we stand really? So it's, it's getting a lot better. The great thing about the area that we live in, the Midwest, 
is we are the least expensive place in the country to live. So it goes, um, the West, we're right around 177,000 in terms of median sale price. The West is about 300, the Northeast is about 269, and the South is about 192. So we're very affordable right now. We are in a great booming city that we all love mm -hmm. dearly. And it, it's really a great time to buy, and it's really affordable. I want to challenge you about something and see what you think. You know, you talk about fixing up your house mm -hmm. and making it look perfect, and maybe that's how most people are. Me, mm -hmm. I like to find something run down, like a fixer sure. upper, and then I always think, well, then I can make all the, uh, I can change everything my way. Is mm -hmm. that a minority view? You know, everybody has a different view on that, but some people really like to walk into perfect, and some people are like you that are like, oh, I really want a fixer upper. So mm -hmm. there's plenty of fixer uppers on the market right now. I would say that if you are ready, you're thinking about it, get your house on the market because we have such low inventory right now. I was going right to say, now. you said that it was low inventory now. Very low inventory. Mm -hmm. So, and the interest rates are still exceptionally low. Mm -hmm. So it's a it's a great time to put your house on the market. You're gonna get, you're gonna get it sold, and that's really what our goal in. Your goal probably okay. is. Okay, I have one question for you, just Absolutely. random here. So, do you have any? Do you have a horror story of a situation where maybe your real estate agent did like an open house somewhere and they weren't ready? The house wasn't ready. Maybe there was. I hear oh. so many things like that. I have a friend who's a real estate agent. Okay. Too, so. so I will tell you, we've had a couple of very funny but horror stories. When I was um, with a client, we were going through a house and we got into the house and we went upstairs mm -hmm. and we didn't have the listing i had the buyer and there was a um man sound asleep upstairs in the bed <laughs> and you're like oh, you know oh my. <laughs> i thought it was gonna be something dirty no. or like a cat no. or no, an no, animal we, we like a human a human well you know horror story yes. we are approaching halloween so it's appropriate yeah. that's that's mm -hmm. there perfect. you go <laughs> perfect. we were all like oh, i was like turn around go 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 yes <laughs> that's so, crazy yes. oh my gosh so that's fun well thank you so much for being Thanks here for and sharing me. all these things with us today and, and we're going to go ahead and check out and see what's going on with and debbie in the den check out the website down below kellyhager.com and debbie what's going on in the den well, there is a new event coming to St. Louis, and it promises to be a great opportunity for nonprofit businesses and designers alike. And here to tell us a little bit more about the upcoming Meet and Match is architect Robert Johnson. Thanks for being with us, Robert. Debbie, thanks for having me. Now, you are with Canon Design. Correct. Um, and what is your involvement with Meet and Match? So this is, uh, this is the fourth time Canon Design has hosted this event. This is the first time in St. Louis. Um, we've previously hosted in San Francisco, Chicago, and Buffalo. And um, I'm coordinating the entire event. We started about six months ago, kind of pulling this whole thing together. And uh, we'll be hosting at COCA um, a week from next Wednesday, so September 24th. So designers and architects are always in demand, of course, right. by those of us who don't know how to design or do things like that. I personally, I sit on several boards of nonprofits, and that's mm -hmm. always the big challenge of, okay, so we need this design, but who can we afford, and we don't have any money, and is that what you run into with nonprofits? We run into this all the time. I think, um, you know, as designers, we take for granted that, you know, design is important. The reality is design is important not only to our you know, larger clients and large institutions um, in the city, it's important to everyone. And there are certainly some groups that don't have access to great design. And, you know, not-for-profit groups is a great place to start. And so we're trying to attract those groups and bring them in and match them up with great designers in the city. And hopefully, have a, hopefully they can forge a great relationship and find great services. So I understand the advantage to the meet and match for mm -hmm. the nonprofit. Well, what's the advantage for the designers and yeah. architects who might be participating? So we really, at Canon Design and Open Hand Studio, we really believe there is a movement within the design community to move towards um, a, a public interest design. And we believe that this is integral to our practice as architects and designers generally. And um, we do also f find it we have found in the past it difficult to connect with some of the not-for-profit groups. It's not really in our network. You know, at Canon Design, we have large, institu large institutional clients, and most architecture and design firms have certain, certain types of clients, and oftentimes it's not the not-for-profit groups. Um, we think it's very important to be um, connected to our community and impacting our community positively, and we think this is an opportunity for those designers to meet these not-for-profit groups and get more involved in their community. That's great to hear, because I think a lot of nonprofits just assume that the big design companies aren't interested right. in them because they don't have the money that some of the bigger clients would have. Absolutely, and and you know this is an open-ended event, and we don't we don't necessarily expect large firms like Canon Design to show up as a firm. But there, Canon Design is made of 
And in, our, in St. Louis, 100 different individuals, and any one of them could show up, and that's the case for every design firm. So this could be looked at, you know, a, a whole company may come, and maybe just an individual comes. So. And so on the design side, say there's a designer who's just getting started, mm -hmm. this could be a good opportunity for them to build a portfolio of work that they've done. It's a great opportunity to build a portfolio, and we've heard stories not only in our own practice but in other people's practice that they may start off with a pro bono with pro bono work working with not-for-profits and it may build into paid work either with that not-for-profit or another group that that not-for-profit is connected to has it worked out in any of the past meet and matches where one of the designers will continue to do the work <laughs> pro bono or is it always sort of the hope and expectation that it moves on to the paid level um, I think there's always a hope and expectation but I think we see in, in um, you know every industry um, you know, you see this often in law that, that um, large groups want to be connected to not-for-profits and they want to do either pro bono work or reduced um, fee work. And we hope that it's important to the culture of design that we always have, you know, clients like that, whether we call them clients or partners, but we hope that we're always connected to the community that way. And how can people get involved, whether they are a designer wanting to help or mm -hmm. a nonprofit looking for a designer? What's the best way to get involved with this event? So the best way um, is to go, we have a Facebook page. Um, it's Meet and Match St. I think it's Meet and Match St. Louis on Facebook. Um, we also have an event, Eventbrite um, site where you can sign up. We're also uh, associated with St. Louis Design Week, which begins um, the week following next. And there are a number of events, and we are listed on that calendar. So if you go to St. Louis Design Week, which is being run by the AIGA, um, you can find our event, and you can follow those links and sign up. Fantastic. Well, Great. I hope you have a fantastic event, and I can certainly name many nonprofits that I'm going to pass this along to. Great. So we hope people get that information. You see it right there, openhandstudio.com on Facebook slash uh, Meatland Match STL, I think is what that is. Robert, thanks so much for the time. And when we come back, we'll meet someone from a company that designs all kinds of amazing things all over the world. We'll be right back on St. Louis Presents. This financial advisor is being accused of committing one of the largest investment frauds in the history of the United States. I guess we're not going to Aspen. That's fine. You see, I like tennis balls. He likes insider trading. So he's going to jail and I'm going to a shelter. And no, they're not the same thing. Shelters are for good pets that want to be adopted. Jails are for criminals. I've done nothing. Uh-oh. Okay, I stole a cheeseburger once on my dog. For those dealing with the struggles of caring for a loved one, we hear you. Visit aarp.org slash caregiving for advice and support. Over 13 million people are affected by famine, war, and drought in the Horn of Africa. Make a simple text donation of $10. But do more than donate. Forward the facts. Welcome back to St. Louis Presents. Our next guest is the vice president of a really cool company based right here in St. Louis. They are the global leader in the planning and design of unique destinations. Their work can be seen around the globe and of course right here in St. Louis. Now chances are if you've visited a place or two they've probably had a small hand in it and here to tell us about some of their projects is Emily Howard. Emily thanks for joining us. Thank you. Now PGAV Destinations is probably one of these companies that when people hear about what you do they go really that's here in St. Louis? <laughs> mm -hmm. Yes that's true. So you've been with the company for how long? 16 years. All mm -hmm. right and projects around the world. We're going to show a couple of those in just a bit, okay. but let's start with the one that we talked about at the open of the show, which is the Cardinals Hall of Fame and Museum in Ballpark Village. Right, yeah. Uh, that opened this year with opening day, so this April, and it's an 8,000 square foot museum and Hall of Fame really celebrating the Cardinals and their legacy. So what does it take? This is, this is what we were talking about earlier, and it's yeah. so intriguing to me. What does it take to I guess, start and, and finish a project like this. I, I know we were talking about who you have in-house and that kind of thing. Sure, How does yeah. that start? Yeah. 
Well, we actually did some work with the Cardinals previously with their different museums. And so they came to us when they were ready to embark on this adventure at Ballpark Village. And so we teamed up with them. We, we really like to become partners with the client. And I feel like with the Cardinals in particular, we really did. And in-house, you know, they came to us with some ideas, but we have architects, exhibit designers, graphic designers, um, media producers, everybody in-house so that neat. we brought these ideas to the table and were able to work with them and come up with a fun museum. So you don't even have to outs outsource those people. That's all in-house. That's right. That's we do so that amazing to me yeah. that you do that from start to finish. <laughs> That's and the, really neat. The great thing about the, the Ballpark Village um, Cardinals Museum and Hall of Fame is um, it, it's very interactive, which really is important these days because even, you know, the Baseball Hall of Fame in Cooperstown is having difficulties because it's so old school. People don't want to go and just right. read a plaque on a wall and then read the next plaque on the wall. So yeah. that's, some, I'm sure, something that uh, you constantly have to evolve. Right. Well, and that's interesting, too, because you're working with artifacts that are static, mm -hmm. so you can't do a lot with them, but you can enhance it with uh, a lot of media, with things like the broadcast booth, which mm -hmm. I don't know if you got to do that when you were there, but it's fun to be able to interact with the plays and hear yourself as if you're a broadcaster. Um, but one thing you do get to do is hang on to an actual bat, which you did mention before. And was that's that right? Really was it Ozzie Smith? Ozzie Smith okay. is one of them. That's There's a cool. few to choose from. Uh, the most popular is Stan Musial, oh, as you sure. can probably imagine. A lot of people really like to hold that piece of history. Oh, there actually is a Stan Musial, like, um, is it a wax it's figure a or something? Figure, it looks yes. like he's standing there looking at you. Yeah. It's almost <laughs> like a little <laughs> off-putting. <Whoa. laughs> <You're like, "What?" laughs> Let's talk about some of the other projects you do because we, sure. we discussed how you're doing projects around the world. Mm -hmm. And what's this project that you guys have done in China? Yeah, we opened a theme park in China, which actually set five world records. Oh, that's um, awesome. So, yeah, and it has uh, not only rides, but it also has a lot of animal exhibits as well. So, it's a a great place for the whole family to go in China. That so just opened. Mm -hmm. What have been some of the other projects you guys have worked on here in St. Louis besides the museum? Uh, we do a lot of work with the Botanical Garden, the Science Center, um, Anheuser-Busch. We opened the Beer Garden not too long ago, so that's a lot of fun to go down to as well. So from a beer garden mm -hmm. at the brewery <laughs> to an entire amusement park, mm -hmm. That so I, I guess it, size doesn't matter for PGAB. Size doesn't matter, yeah. We'll take on any project as long as it's a, an attraction where the owner is willing to help us and um, you know make something fun, especially fun for families. We really like attractions that appeal to everybody. Now, the, um, what we're seeing right now, the, is this in, in China? This is the Columbus Zoo. Oh, and the that, Columbus Zoo. That just opened in May. I used to yeah. be a member of the Columbus oh, yeah? Zoo. Yeah. I used to yeah. live there. There's a new Africa exhibit there. That's awesome. <laughs> Oh, wow. um, and this looks like a Brook, uh, Brookfield Zoo, I'm guessing. I'm not sure. Oh, and that, in or, yeah. Mm -hmm. oh, that's we awesome. did a polar bear exhibit there. Now, do you do a lot of zoo work? Oh, is this this is the roller coaster? Holy yes, cow, this is Manta. That. Oh, that. You would be, we'd be looking at that. <laughs> See that right there? Wait, that so you would not be me. Yeah. No, so you get wet. That's a great. It, it no, actually shoots water. You don't actually get wet on that one, but it's a lot of fun. That's wow. in Sea World Orlando. Mm. I'll take this, your word for it, girl. This is Biltmore. <laughs> the Biltmore Estate. Yeah, so right. what did you do with the Biltmore Estate? I was there maybe 20 years ago. So what, right. what did you do there? Um, they have a village that's down the hill from Biltmore, from the actual home. Mm -hmm. And it includes um, retail as well as some food and uh, venues. So it's a, a nice place for people to gather and then also experience the home. That is fantastic. Yeah. yeah, if you ever go to Asheville, North Carolina, you have got to go to the Biltmore State. Yes. So do you often find, Emily, that people are very surprised that mm -hmm. all of these fantastic projects are happening right here in St. Louis? A lot of people are surprised mm -hmm. that we're in St. Louis, but it's a great central location because we go all over the U.S. doing projects as well as all over the world. A lot of travel, I'm assuming. So, yes, On yeah, your we end travel as well, do you a lot of travel sure, or do I, you stay mostly here? No, I travel a lot. Yeah, I'm gone almost every week. So. Did you go to China for that project as I well? I didn't. That I was, was going to ask about I, that. I was, yeah, I was wondering <laughs> earlier about that. Okay. But it was fun having a project here in town. Mm -hmm. One, just because it's, it's great being in town and mm -hmm. doing something for your hometown that everybody can come visit, your family. So that's a lot of fun, but then I also didn't have to travel too far. Just walk down the street. Right, so. yeah. China is not one of the projects you can just sort of yeah. check up on. Uh, yeah. No, no. <laughs> Especially when you go that's to the museum, you're play. like, uh, I did that. <laughs> I had something to do with all of this right here. Does it ruin other destinations uh, for you? Because you're looking at it like, I wonder why they put that there. Yes. I wouldn't mm -hmm. have done that. Mm -hmm. Yeah, sometimes it does. Because I do look for all those little nuances. But I also try to enjoy them. And I like to experience them with other people. Mm -hmm. Because seeing destinations through other people's eyes is always so much fun. Because right. you 
think of things that you don't realize that you're mm -hmm. doing as a designer, and they bring it to your attention. So it's a lot of fun doing that too. Okay, so one last <laughs> question, because yeah. I'm so curious about this particular position. Who, I guess, what is the title, or who is the person, or people, or team that actually conceptualize, like start the concept, like at the very beginning of the museum project, okay, this is what we're gonna do. Graphically, we're gonna do this, I wanna have right. bets, and you can hold them, like who yeah. is the person that does that, or people, or team? Uh, we do that in-house as well, mm -hmm. and it's different for every project, mm -hmm. um, but we pull together, we like to pull together a lot of different brains to be able to think of things that are fun and interesting. So um, we had a, a core group for the Cardinals Hall of Fame, mm -hmm. uh, four or five people, that really just brainstormed and came up with fun ideas that then we would take to the owner. Um, and they had their ideas too. So That's with awesome. all of us, we kind of went back and forth and came up with that a lot of That would be really stuff. fun, like brainstorming sessions Yeah, like that. yeah, mm -hmm. it is fun. Well, Emily Howard, we look forward to hearing about the next big project. So keep us updated with PGAB Destinations. <laughs> and we're going to find out what uh, Steve Potter has to tell us because he's got some headlines coming up and you can get more uh, while we're getting Steve in position, pgabdestinations.com. And I'm sure that uh, people can learn more about your projects there. Thanks so much. Much. Thank you. And uh, speaking of destinations, I got back from one, which I'm going to tell you about in just a second. The seventh annual Food for Fines program was another great success for the St. Louis Public Library and the St. Louis Area Food Bank. The program gives St. Louisans the opportunity to help their community while reducing overdue fines. For every item donated, fines were reduced by one dollar. Many patrons donated at all library locations despite not owing any fines. So over the course of a month, nearly seven tons of food were donated, providing over 11,000 meals for families and individuals throughout our area. The Food Bank is a nonprofit food distribution center for organizations that feed the hungry in 14 eastern Missouri and 12 southwestern Illinois counties. The office of St. Louis Comptroller Darlene Green and STL 250 are coming together to celebrate 50 contemporary writers and authors from the St. Louis area. Our Pins Are Mighty will take place Sunday, September the 28th from 2 into 4 at the Missouri History Museum. There will be brief remarks at this special meet and greet event taking place in the Lee Auditorium. For more information about this free event, call 314-746-4599. And September is National Preparedness Month. Being prepared is a key step in a community's ability to recover more quickly from disasters. The three basic steps in being prepared are making a plan, building a kit, and being informed. There are many resources online that can assist you in making a plan and building a kit, including the City Emergency Management Agency's page on the city's website. Staying informed in the city of St. Louis is as easy as texting STLCEMA to 888-777 to receive emergency text and email alerts. You can also receive weather alerts from the National Weather Service by using a NOAA weather radio. Throughout September, you can learn more about preparedness tips and resources on the city's Facebook page and by following SEMA on Twitter. And, you know, speaking of destinations, which you guys were a little bit, and we've been talking the last few weeks about going places, I finally went on a summer vacation, and I just Ooh. got back. I spent a week out in the middle of camping out in the middle of nowhere. Camping in the middle, in of, the middle nowhere. of nowhere. So about four hours that way. <laughs> okay, okay. Who did you go with? Um, I went by myself, believe it or not. No Goodness. way! Well, How long I, were you there? How long I was did you there camp? a week, and uh, it's like you go to Rolla, down 44 to Rolla, and then go like two and a half hours south, almost to Arkansas. I was literally in the middle of nowhere, but it was really a lot of fun. So get... you had a lot of time to uh, be alone with your yeah. thoughts, Steve. That's kind of frightening. That was horrifying <laughs> for so everyone. camping the whole seven days, like the yeah, whole. Yeah. Right. So outside. Yeah. It was like the shorts, the shorts and flip flops for a week. Cooking your food out I outside. I really, you know, decompressed. Oh, I couldn't do that. I went to Ireland on my summer vacation. Wow. Oh, See, that's to me, that's nice. work. You, when you use airports and things, I just want to get in my car and go somewhere. Really? Mm -hmm. I don't mind that I want to so see stuff. Yeah. I want to go yeah. somewhere. Driving, I get so bored. So I, I want to sit there and look, look at a tree for like a week. Okay. okay. All right. Well, you look at your tree, and uh, <laughs> we're going to tell people that uh, we really appreciate them joining us on this edition of St. Louis Presents. Yes, we want to thank our guests today and everybody at home for watching. And of course, make sure you follow us on all of our social networks, Facebook, Twitter, YouTube, we're everywhere you guys already know. And we will see y'all next time. Bye. Bye.